I'm so excited with this new project and I'm excited to share with you how I got it done. Before we get started, I hope you consider subscribing and following me on this journey. Hi friends, as you guys know, I struggle with gophers in my new property and I'm about to be installing some new fruit trees in my orchard section of my property. But one of my concerns is that the gophers are going to get to the root ball. So I went ahead and made these cages to protect the root ball of my fruit trees. Now these cages will allow them to root out of the cage, but it will prevent the gophers to get into the main root ball of my tree. So let me go ahead and explain to you how I'm doing this. As you can see, I took a chair to help me measure the width of the cage. I went ahead and wrapped it around the cage also to help me hold the wire while I cut it, which is not an easy task. If anybody of you have worked with this wiring, it's some tough, good wiring, but it's not easy to handle and it's not easy to cut. <laughs> As you can see, once I determined the width of the cage, I went ahead and cut it off. After that, I took what was left and cut a square that would cap off the cage. I couldn't believe how long it was taking me to just cut this piece of wire. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit. For future reference, if you guys are going to do this, I would highly recommend very heavy duty gloves because you won't be afraid of getting poked and you will get the job done a lot faster now that it's done i'm going to go ahead and put it in the ground and flatten it out so when i go ahead and put the chicken cage or the wiring cage on top of this it'll be a lot easier to do once i have all the pieces cut out now i can sit down and take a little break what i'm going to do is take some zip lines by the way i purchased these at the dollar store so they were very affordable and i'm basically going to sew the chicken wiring together so it can stay into a cage once i remove the chair from here you can put as many zip ties as you want i put one every few inches and i think that did the job and once i got just the main corners zip tied i went ahead and pulled it off the chair that way it'll be easier for me to add the rest of the zip ties believe it or not this was the most relaxing part about this whole project i would i was able to sit down and just take my time doing this if you guys have done this before i would love to hear it in the comments if you guys have any suggestions i would love to hear that too if you guys saw my last video of me planting my fruit trees you saw that it was a disaster creating a cage for my fruit trees i think this is going to solve the issue as you can see now, I put the cage on top of the other piece of galvanized chicken wire and I went ahead and zip tied it all around. That way, once it is completely in place, I'm going to trim off the pieces and bend it down so it creates of a kind of like a double layer that's going to hold the root ball in place and prevent those nasty little rodents from getting into my root ball from my trees. All right, friends, well, while I do that, I want to take this opportunity to tell you guys thank you so much for all the encouragement you guys gave me on my last video. I know I was a little bumped on how hard things are to do here in the homestead, especially getting things in the ground. I want to say that some of you guys gave me some great advice and some great feedback. I know one of you mentioned that big things take time to do and this is definitely a big project that's going to be beautiful at the end and i should definitely take my time doing so but i just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you guys i really appreciate all the comments and the love you guys left on my last video i am truly grateful to have you guys here and i feel so happy to have read all those wonderful messages spring is almost here and i'm about to start my seat project my seed growing project and my raised beds i can't wait to get some vegetables in the ground and do a pumpkin patch for lily that she's been asking for a long time i'm going to try to keep it one project at a time and be patient with this journey once i was done basically zip tying the bottom of this cage i went ahead and took it to the hole where i plan on planting my tree i measured out to see how deep it was and i was hoping it would be half of the way of this cage once i determined this was going to work out i went ahead and took the cage back to my working station as you can see i measured the cage once more and cut out another piece to cover the other side of the cage now once again we got to start all over again make sure that we put it flat where it belongs and start zip tying all around 
once you're done zip tying i'm basically just going to trim down the sections that are hanging over into little sections and bending them down this is going to help create a cage within a cage so basically the cage is going to be sitting in a little cup holding the cage i guess it's kind of like a little cup holding the cage if that makes sense so all the little pieces are going to get trimmed out and then i'm just going to bend them down and cut a little bit of it and kind of inter intersect the edges of this cage into the original cage and it'll just help lock everything and if you want to go the extra step you can take more zip ties and tie it down for me this was good enough so that's what i went ahead and did the last thing i want to add that's very important before i show you the end results i want to let you know that i did not go with regular chicken wires because regular chicken wires the holes are much too big the gophers can still fit through those holes so you want to get the smaller holes as possible because you want to protect your root ball you don't want to have gophers going through the chicken wire regular chicken wire would not be recommended for this project oh, guys this was such a challenge it probably took me about an hour or two to do this i think from now on this is what i'm gonna do if i continue to buy a wire this size so what i'm going to do now is i cover both sides because i measure the hole and I wanted to see how big it was going to be. Keep in mind, your root ball is going to be sitting in here, but it's going to have access to steel root ball. So you want to protect the main root ball so those rodents or those little festy things that are underground are not eating your root ball all the way to where the, you know, to the trunk. So you want to protect most of it. This is obviously not going to protect all the roots. So now that I created a cover, I went ahead and equally counted each side so that way I can get two cages out of one and the hole that I dug up is not as deep as um, as I want it to be but I think it's going to be fine what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig it a little bit deeper add some gravel that way I can go ahead and um, add some sort of um, some sort of drainage and then I'm going to add some soil then I'm going to add the cage and add soil and put the root ball in here. So the roots are going to be able to go through these little holes, but I'm not going to allow any little underground rodents to get to the main root ball and get to the trunk and completely kill my tree. So this is my attempt to learning and protecting my fruit trees in the ground in my new homestead that has tons of what is it called jasmine gophers. gophers yes my daughter is here helping me today record that way i can get this project done faster because it takes a lot of time stopping and going when you're recording by yourself all right guys let's go to the next step Alright guys, now that you see how I was able to make two of these out of one, I'm going to put it next to a 15 gallon container as you can see here. My, let's see what it is, Dwarf Mandarin Satsuma. You can see that the 15 gallon is they're almost the same size. The soil is about right here anyways. And look at how much wider. Keep in mind fruit trees don't normally go down, they usually spread out. So, um, I mean they do go down about 3 feet approximately but they usually end up spreading out their roots so this is going to protect them from anything that comes at them from the bottom and from the side and anything any roots beyond this it's going to be fine because keep in mind i'm growing fruit trees in containers and they are producing fruit as you can see right here so as long as they are in the ground and they have all of this space to work with you are going to be just fine i can't wait to get the satsuma in the ground for now i have two cages let me grab the other one two cages ready to go so i'm going to be putting my satsuma and look for another citrus to complete the the first row of my orchard here at garden loves homestead i'm so excited guys this took me about an hour or two because i don't cut as fast as most people would with stronger strength in their hands and 
I needed to get some good gloves, which I did not have. So for that reason, I was very slow. I'm sure if you have a good pair of gloves, really good strong hands, you would do this in about 30 minutes, which is worth it. I looked online to see if there was anything I can purchase that way to make this orchard process faster. And there was nothing in the market that I would personally purchase to make this project and to make my fruit trees succeed in my new homestead. Well guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me some thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you like this video. If not, hopefully in the next one. If you do subscribe, go ahead and hit the notification so you guys can get notified for more videos like this. I hope you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.